Hello and welcome to Ghost Ships. Sometimes inspiration for video topics come from the strangest locations and this week's entry is no different. Over the weekend I watched the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie, Dead Man Tell No Tales, as well as a YouTube video about the Bermuda Triangle supposedly being figured out. It was at that moment that I realized I wanted to look into ghost ships. There are plenty of ships that have vanished or returned without their crew, but that isn't what I was interested in. What I was curious about was if there were any true stories or even myths about ships that have vanished and reappeared, and if possible, actually have a spectral crew aboard that are active. I am happy to report that such cases do exist, and that is what we are looking at this week. As a bonus, I'm adding an interesting cryptid type being that I randomly stumbled across and which many sailors believe to exist aboard all sailing vessels. So sit back and grab a glass of rum, or for us non-alcoholic drinkers, a cup of orange juice, and enjoy some of these tales from the sea. SS Valencia Our first story is wrought with tragedy, a curse, and quite an interesting aftermath. The SS Valencia was an American ocean liner that was built in 1882 for the Red D Line Company. The Red D Line was specifically known for chartering trips between New York and Venezuela for over 40 years. Not only was the SS Valencia a cruise ship during its brief time at sea, but it also served as a military vessel for the United States Army in 1898 during the Spanish-American War. Later when it resumed its duties as a cruise ship, it was not considered a luxury ride, as many passengers complained about how small it was, as well as its design left many people exposed to the elements while on board. Due to this, as well as not having a two-layer hull, it frequently was left anchored at dock for use as a backup ship. On January 20th, 1906, the craft was put into service since the SS City of Puebla was undergoing repairs and wouldn't be seaworthy. It left San Francisco with a crew of 9 officers, 56 crewmen, and a reported 108 passengers for a trip to Seattle. One day later the weather took a turn for the worst and the crew started to rely on guessing at what location they were at since they couldn't navigate by the stars. On January 22nd the ship missed its stop and started heading into Canada and this is where it struck a reef near Pachina Point. Immediately the crew saw the hull had a huge gash in it and the captain sent the order to reverse engines and then ram the reef again in the hopes of preventing the ship from sinking. Frantically the passengers lowered six of the seven lifeboats but three flipped over in the air and the other three didn't fare well either with two capsizing and a third vanishing from sight. Twelve men managed to reach shore in an attempt to find help but three of them got swept away by the current. While this was going on, the last lifeboat was lowered and the people on board were finally able to get help. Even after rescuers arrived, the ship was a total loss and the death toll was officially reported as 136, although that number has fluctuated. 37 men survived and every single woman and child died. It has gone down as one of the worst disasters at sea in the Pacific. True to our topic, for years after the event, sailors have told tales of seeing the ghost ship of the SS Valencia around Pachina Point. An even grimmer encounter states that some have seen the ghostly wreckage of the ship at sea, with human bodies strewn about, all writhing in agony. The most spookiest encounter involves sailors reporting the sight of one of the Valencia's life rafts being rowed by passengers that are reanimated skeletons. Tying in with this, Native Americans in the area have reported that in a cave they found a raft with eight skeletons in it near the wreck. What makes it mysterious is that the cave is surrounded by treacherous waters and the mouth is covered with a large boulder. Maybe what the sailors have been seeing are the spirits of those individuals still trying to find help. As for the curse I mentioned at the beginning, the SS Valencia's sister ship, the Caracas, came to a similar fate near the same location a few years prior in 1888 when it got free from its tugboat and ran aground. Kalush This ship is one that reminds me the most of the version of the Flying Dutchman which is found in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie series. The Mapuche people of South Africa told tales of a ghost ship known as the Kalush that was frequently seen near the island of Chilo which is close to Chile's coast. This ship is said to actually be a conscious spirit itself almost like a being that can travel on the water or even under the waves. 
Most sightings and descriptions have claimed that while it is on the water's surface, it is a beautiful white ship with three masts that each have five pearly white sails. The deck is brightly lit and the sounds of a large party, including laughter, is heard emanating from it. This ship is not for the living though, and its main purpose is to summon all the souls who have drowned in the sea to find refuge on it. For most of the stories, those souls are then allowed to have a peaceful existence, and in some tellings are allowed to go ashore once every year to take care of their families. The premise is that the Kalush is a way for drowned sailors to find a place to stay instead of being lonely in the depths of the ocean. In most cases, when mortals catch sight of the vessel, it quickly disappears or submerges in the water. However, things aren't all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to this party ship, as reports have stated that living fishermen are frequently kidnapped and brought aboard in order to act as part of the crew, whether they want to or not. In many versions, these trapped men are frequently seen with one of their legs folded behind their back in order to keep them from escaping. Not to question the folktale, but you may be wondering how they keep those living captives alive when submerged underwater. Apparently, the fishermen are turned into a form of a Chilean being known as an Invunch. That being is said to guard warlock cave entrances and are merely servants as they can't communicate outside of grunts, so they aren't human form anymore, but they are a different type of being. To add a bit more mystique to this craft, it is said to be run by three water beings who are siblings. The first sibling, known as Selena Chilota, is said to look like a typical mermaid with gold scales, long blonde hair, and the body and face of a teenager. The second sister, named Pincoya, is also said to have blonde hair, a completely human body, incomparable beauty, and has a fairly friendly nature. The last member is the brother known as Picoy, who has the body of a sea lion with a gold mane and the face of an attractive man. These three are considered to be in control of the ship, and all of them are considered the children of Mila Lobo and, pardon me if I said this wrong because I couldn't find a pronunciation, but Huanchula, who are the king and queen of the sea, Flying Dutchman. I tossed this entry back and forth about whether to include it or not in this video, as I previously covered it in great detail as its own topic. The sticking point for me was that I couldn't rightfully make a video about ghost ships and not include one of, if not the most famous one. I won't go into too much detail about this topic, as editing it down wouldn't do it justice, but I strongly encourage you to click the link I will leave in the description to my folklore facts video about it, as it is highly informative. To make a brief summary, the Flying Dutchman is frequently misinterpreted to be the name for the ship, but it is in fact the moniker of the captain. From everything I have been able to gather over the years, the true identity of the ship is still unknown. Even the captain's name is one of controversy, as two people fit the description, as well as the way they died are exactly the same. A lot of places simply state that the captain was a man by the name of Hendrik van der Decken, or frequently it is just shortened to just van der Decken. While it is true that he died in a similar fashion to the tales, and also worked for the Dutch East India Company, Another man fits the description a little better. Bernard Folk was known to have a short temper, as the captain in the tales does, but the most interesting fact about him was that he was actually given the nickname the Flying Dutchman, for having the fastest vessel on the seas due to having stronger rigging that allowed his ship to stay at full sails while others couldn't. This little bit of information alone leads me to believe that most sources may have the wrong captain's name. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. The captain was attempting to round the Cape of Good Hope, located near South Africa, during a sudden violent storm. His crew pleaded with him to turn around, but he ignored their cries and went to his cabin to drink. Having enough, the men staged the mutiny and tried to turn the ship around, to which the captain burst out of his quarters and shot the leader of the group. He then ordered the body to be thrown unceremoniously overboard, and as soon as it hit the water, the skies cleared up. This normally could be seen as a good thing, but with the parting storm came a shadowy figure. The spirit admonished the captain, stating that he was a very stubborn man. Enraged, the captain snapped back that he never asked for a peaceful passage and that the ghost needed to leave or it would be shot as well. When the shadow didn't move, the captain fired his gun, but it blew up in his hands. The apparition then told him that he was now cursed due to his actions and would forever roam the sea without the ability to make port. His food would consist of hot iron, and his drink would be gall, which is salt water. 
His crew would be condemned to be ghosts, and just the mere sight of his vessel would cause death to others. To this, the bullheaded captain replied, Amen to that. As with most tales, there are different variations to the story, and I do go over them in the video I mentioned prior. However the story happened, sailors and people on land have claimed to have come across or seen the ill-fated ship throughout the years. Some claim it will intentionally lead other craft into rocky areas, or attempt to ram ships before vanishing from sight. One of the saddest parts of the story is that in some tellings the vessel has come alongside other ships, and the undead skeleton crew will try in vain to hand letters over to the living to give to their loved ones. In these reports, the captain is frequently seen at the wheel, crying out to the heavens, asking for his curse to be lifted. To this day, sightings of this ship still occur. Clab Otterman As I promised early on, this entry isn't a ghost ship, but rather a form of a cryptid that was said to live on ships. What makes this truly interesting is how much it seems to mimic another creature of Scottish and English folklore known as the Brownie. This being is of the family of creatures known as a kobold, which is basically a spirit from Germanic folklore that can be both helpful or harmful. The club alderman is said to look like a very small human-like being that wears a sailor's hat, yellow clothes, and frequently has a pipe. The creature originally was known as a helpful being who would help clean up the ship, provide music, and even rescue any sailor that had accidentally fell overboard. One of the most unique things about this spirit is that for the most part, it couldn't be seen by anyone on the ship. However, it was said that if crew members did begin to see it, then it was a bad thing, as it meant the vessel they were sailing on was cursed, and they wouldn't be returning home. Of course, over time the creature was said to cause havoc, and even was blamed for causing shipwrecks. This similar behavior is frequently seen when dealing with the brownies, and that if they feel their labors are not appreciated by a household, they will either start causing mischief, or simply leave the property for good. So I guess if you're ever on a ship and you see a strange tiny being walking around in yellow clothes, you may want to rethink your travel plans. I was going to include the tale of the ship known as the Lady Lovabond, but after doing some quick checks on it, I found some conflicting information that made me believe the whole thing was made up for Valentine's Day. No records exist of the ship wrecking, and the majority of the tales is about a scorned lover. I did go into details about this ship in my Mysteries of the Sea video, which I'll also include a link to that in the description as well. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Also, if you enjoyed what you just saw, clicking that thumbs up button would be greatly appreciated. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!